Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Nurse Mama Show, prescribing hope for healthy families here on American Family Radio. Here's your host, professor, pediatric nurse practitioner, and mom of four, Dr. Jessica Peck. Well, hello, friends, and welcome, welcome to the show today. I am really excited about our guest. We have today Derek England. He is the executive director of Family ID, and we actually had him scheduled before, but a tornado warning disrupted our schedule. And so I'm thinking there must be something really good coming your way if we're experiencing these barriers. So I'm excited to to talk to you about Family ID. Now, this is a ministry that focuses on increasing the positive impact and fulfillment of families by helping them identify their unique vision, purpose, and values. Now, Derek joined Family ID in late 2019 after a successful career in residential home lending. And having completed Family ID for the first time in 2011, about eight years before, he says it has always held a special place in his heart. Now, Derek was brought on to help with growth and development of Family ID through technology and fundraising and systems and processes and an insight on raising a young family with intentionality. You can see why this is speaking to my heart and what we do here on the Dr. Nurse Mama Show, Prescribing Hope for Healthy Families. Derek and his family live in the Oklahoma City area, and he's blessed to be married to his wife, Gina, for 20 years. They have two teenagers, and their family is focused on shining strong in this world. Derek, welcome to the show. We're so glad to have you. Well, thank you very much. It is a true blessing to be here. Um, And I'm just thankful. uh, Surprise. Hey, I'm in Oklahoma, and that tornado warning was actually not for us. Isn't that that the, the backward side of things? That's, you know, how we feel here in Houston when there's no hurricane warning for us. We feel sympathy for our neighbors, but grateful that it's not our turn. And, you know, speaking of tornadoes, Derek, I can't help but notice that you joined Family ID in late 2019, which, of course, we know what happened in early 2020. And I actually went to a new university and started a new job myself in 2019. So what was that like coming to a ministry, probably expecting things to to go one way and then being disrupted by COVID. I'd love to hear the story behind Family ID. Absolutely. Um, so it was a surprise, right? Um, so I joined Family ID in 2019, and Greg Gunn actually started the organization um, back in 1997. He, uh, after being inspired by one of his good friends and pastors about doing uh, a family planning weekend. Greg said, I've got to do that. I've got to do it for my family, and I've got to do it for for my Sunday school. And so he started it, and it grew out of there into a full-blown ministry. And for many of the years, it was highly a seminar-focused workshop, going into churches, organizations, putting families in circular tables and speaking from a stage and walking them through. And so that was kind of the expectation, and we knew we had to transition and grow from that Um, especially when I joined in 2019. But then to your point, when COVID hit in 2020, it wasn't a, well, I guess we'll just have to wait. It was a, no, now now is the time to hit the gas and let's Mm -hmm. do this because families need this more than ever. So we've been on a mission to digitize and grow digitally since that point. and, And God's blessed it in great ways. See, I love that because, you know, challenge brings opportunity that you may not have even seen before. And, you know, it's funny hearing you say that it started in 1997. Now, some people might think that's a relatively new organization still, according to my kids, that is literally ancient and it's been around forever, (laughs) right? But, you know, I think about in 2019, I, I was president of my professional organization and we were still doing like conference calls, like this space age Mm -hmm. looking phone in the middle of the room. And really COVID did bring a lot of opportunities for ministries to expand their reach. And I would love to know more about your story in joining this. What's a little bit of your story and how did you arrive at that place at that time, Derek? Well, um, I'll say it was a call out of the blue, but we both know that the tongue in cheek comment. Um, I grew up in the church, seventh grade, church camp, salvation kind of thing. But it was 2012 when my relationship with God really took a dive in the deep end. 
Um, I was at a men's camp, understood my role and responsibility and, and my calling as a follower of Christ, as a husband, and as a father. And I really felt like God was giving me clarity and passion because he was giving a vision on where to go. And that's actually the camp that I met Greg at. Um, and so Gina and I, I met Greg. He talked about family ID and talked about how for so many people, and myself included, um, it is really, really easy to be intentional at work. We have quarterly goals. You have key performance indicators. You have all of these accountability things at the office. But then when we get home, it's so easy just to wing it, right? Take it day by day. And, and that's, that's where I was. That's where so many families are. But if we're willing to be so intentional at the office, we should be equally, if not more intentional at home, because we claim, most of us would claim that family is the most important thing in our lives. But if we look at our actions, it doesn't always match up. And that concept blew my mind, Jessica. I mean, mm -hmm. here Gina and I were, we'd been married for uh, almost 10 years. We had two very young kids. They were two and three years old. And we knew, hey, we, like most young parents, we didn't know exactly what we should do. Hey, are we doing it right? Are we doing enough? Or are we, how do we get there? And so this concept really, really helped me and Greg's heart in it. So Gina and I went to a family ID workshop, one of those seminars that I was talking about. And we did. We put down mission, vision, core values on paper and began to live it out in our young family. Um, uh, from that camp, we created a, a men's ministry, was blessed to be involved in that for many, many years. And then in 2018, really felt the call from God on my heart to transition from, you know, the workplace into full-time ministry. And my first initial reaction was, well, it's probably going to be that men's ministry because I've done that for, <laughs> you know, eight or nine years. Um, but I felt that that door was closed. And so I didn't know what it was going to be. And then Greg called out of the blue, right? And that's that tongue-in-cheek comment there is, of course, it wasn't out of the blue. But he right. called, and he said, hey, I, I think we could, we could work together. We need to take this thing. I've got a, he had a really, really big vision on reaching 30 million families. And so how do we do that? Well, we can't do it in just seminars. We've got to grow this thing intentionally and focused. And so I said, I'm in. My yes is on the table. Let's go. I absolutely love that. You know, one of the things that's so encouraging to me about that, Derek, is that your story in some ways is not unique and that, you know, when God lights your heart on fire, when he gives you a calling, when he gives you, in your words, what you said, clarity and passion, and then opens a completely unexpected and surprising door. I mean, I'm telling you, I can relate to that because I'm sitting right now behind a radio microphone and I can tell you back in 2019, I never saw that coming, but I knew that God had put it on my heart to help families. And, you know, so a book and a radio show, and here we are. And it's encouraging to me for this reason, Derek, because it shows me that God cares so much about the family. He does. And he is moving in the hearts of people all over the country to help in different ways and to bring their gifts. And it's, you know, just really beautiful to see all of these people bringing their different gifts to help help meet families in crisis because it's hard raising a family. I mean, you have two teens now. I've got two teens and two young adults now and kids, and it is, it is really difficult. It's really challenging because some of what you were saying about, you know, look at your, your goals and your intentionality. We are intentional with everything but family. If you look at your calendar, you look at your credit card, it will tell the story of your life and pursuing the American dream. And we're pursuing sports. We're pursuing academic achievements, we're pursuing uh, professional success. And those things in and of themselves are not bad. But when they supersede our priorities, and when the family is just kind of, you know, secondary, that is where we have a problem. And, and this is the point where I came to when my oldest daughter was 13, where I realized I was going to have to be very intentional in prioritizing our family and in unlearning some generational trauma that I had 
learned and relearning new ways of doing things. And I wish I'd found family ID sooner, honestly, Derek. So I'm so <laughs> excited to bring this to the family. So give us a little overview of what kind of services you provide. Like what is the heart of your ministry? Sure. The heart of Family ID is helping families to understand and have confidence and clarity on who God created their family to be. We call that a family identity. Uh, I use it so many times. It's my hook, Jessica. Every time I talk to somebody and introduce them, and I say, hey, what's your family all about? And usually they have this deer in the headlights look and they <laughs> fumble around and, and they end up saying, well, I mean, we try to be good people and love each other and be generous and love God, but we can do better than that. We believe that God put your, your family together on purpose for a purpose. I mean, God and his sovereignty knew exactly who to place in that family, the unique gifts and calling and experiences and beliefs and paths and tendencies and all of that. Um, and so we want to put, really help you create alignment in your family and then put effort and force behind it so that you, as a family, as a collective family, can know who you are, why you're here, where you're going, and how to get there. Like, let's let's do this thing on purpose. Um, you know, we we often use Proverbs 28, 18, uh, or 28, 19 to say, hey, where there is no vision, people perish. The people perish. And if there is no family vision, the family unit perishes. Um, we need a vision because, to your point, vision creates passion. Vision creates, show me somebody who has a passion problem. They don't have a passion problem. They have a vision problem. So let's clarify that vision for the family. And we call that family vision or family direction. Where are we going? Um, most of us, probably the easiest thing to, to relate to is when you have a family vacation. It's easy to have a vision for a family vacation that everybody gets behind. Because you know where you're going, when you're going, how to get there, what you're going to do when you're there. And so, hey, we can do better than that. Your family was put together on purpose, for a purpose. And better than that, each person in the family has a purpose in the family. It's not, family is not just something we experience, but it's something that we participate in and that we grow and develop. And so we help uh, families do that. We have uh, an online family assessment that can help understand a specific family type. We have some digital, completely free digital courses, what we call the Family ID Masterclass, that walks families through, through 10 short two or three minute videos, how to identify family identity, core values, family purpose, family direction, and put it all in writing. I love that quote that you have that God gave on purpose for a purpose. And this is so true because there are so many parents that I meet with Derek who just feel overwhelmed and they feel like they're failing as parents. That's their secret fear is that I am messing up my kids for life. But we have to know that God gave you that specific child in your specific family because he knew that you would be matched perfectly with that child for that child's needs. And when you're talking about family identity together, I know from my profession in pediatrics that families who have a strong identity, their kids are much li less likely to struggle with mental health issues. They're much less likely to engage in risk-taking behaviors. They do better in school. They're generally happier and healthier. And it's because, especially when you're swimming upstream, like we're doing in culture these days, that can be a hard thing for kids to do because they've got to go out there and they've got to be different. But if they have that safe space. If they go back home and hey, we're all in this together, we're all doing this and they know what they're doing and they're doing it on purpose for a purpose. Derek, that is so exciting. Well, there's a lot more to talk about, about family ID. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the specific types of families that family ID focus on focuses on. And I'm going to share with you, I actually took this assessment and I'm going to tell you 
what kind of family my family is. So don't go away. We'll be right back with more from Derek England, the Executive Director of Family ID. Why is our society so ravenous to abort babies? According to a former Satanist, the demonic forces have a bloodlust for the innocents and sickly believe their blood sacrifice empowers evil. Make no mistake, we are fighting a spiritual battle as we protect the most innocent among us, babies and their mother's womb. Preborn stands on the front lines of this battle, and their network of clinics are positioned in the highest abortion areas, often next to abortion mills where unspeakable evil takes place every day. Preborn offers God's love and life to protect hurting women and precious preborn babies. And every time a baby is saved, which happens 200 times a day, good conquers evil. Please make your most generous gift to empower good and rescue precious souls. For just $28, you can sponsor an ultrasound that doubles a baby's chance at life. To donate securely, dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250 baby or go to preborn.com. That's preborn.com. You're listening to the Dr. Nurse Mama Show with Dr. Jessica Peck on American Family Radio. Well, hey, friends, and welcome back. We're talking to Derek England, the executive director of Family ID. Now, this is a ministry that focuses on increasing the positive impact and fulfillment of families by helping them identify their unique vision, purpose, and values. And before the break, I was just talking with Derek about how important it is for families to have a a unique identity and a strong identity so that they can avoid peer pressure and Derek, I think you have something to say about that. It, you are spot on, Jessica. We say it uh, at Family ID like this, where family identity is strong, peer pressure is weak. Amen. But where family identity is weak, peer pressure is strong. In fact, it is insurmountable because it's that it's operating from that sense of identity, from that position of strength, acceptance, and validation that has to begin in the home for all family members to understand this is who I am, and this is who my family says I am, and this is who God says I am. Therefore, they don't have to go look for acceptance, validation, or support in peer groups or at work or um, wherever outside of the home because they know where their family identity and who their personal identity is rooted in beginning in the home. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, we, we love to encourage families with that. It's so important and it's, it's really simple, but it's not always easy. And that's where I think, you know, it's hard to, because we have so many pressures life today is we are living at the speed of a smartphone. I say this all the time. And I think families feel so much pressure to really keep up with the Joneses in a way. And the other thing that I see, Derek, is that families are so digitally connected, but they're so relationally disconnected and this can impact their family ID because because everybody has their own entertainment. And I'm sure you've been out to dinner where you see somewhere and everybody, a family is out to dinner, but they're just all in their devices. And, you know, I, I know that's not my family because that is a hard and fast rule we have as a tech free zone at the table. But I know I can have, see that happening in my house where, you know, we're all on our devices and I'm texting my kid in the next room saying, okay, what's for dinner? What's your plan for tonight? And we really need to have those relational connections. And there are different types of families. And I love that Family ID embraces that and recognizes that there are different families with different personalities and giftedness. So I would love for you to share with our listeners the types of families that Family ID talks about. Sure. Uh, So I'll say this. It's cliche, but we serve all types of families because We believe, and I believe, there isn't a family dynamic or a structure that doesn't need identity and purpose. It is the glue that holds families together. 
And what we've done is over Greg's experience and my experience and, and working with thousands of families, um, we take what we call the core four principles, and that is identity, purpose, direction, and application. And what we've seen is that some families prioritize identity, and they're really, really strong in this, and, and they might be a little bit weaker in some of the other principles. Or well, one family might understand uh, their purpose more than collective identity or relationships or application or direction. And so the sequencing of those, we recognized some tendencies and consistencies in those families, and we started labeling them, uh, and we, we narrowed it down to 16 different family types, and we've got cute little names for them that mm -hmm. really explain the types of families, um, such as the collaborative family or the inventive family, perhaps the resilient family or the, the nurturing family. And it's just a quick um, explanation of a family culture or dynamic inside the home, and it helps to quickly understand common language and strengths and weaknesses of that natural family type. And so we have the opportunity, once a family knows their family type, it gives us an opportunity to minister to them in the way that they most need help, maybe minister to them in some of their weaknesses and encourage them in some of the things that they naturally do well inside the home. I appreciate that, leveraging their strengths, because families need to feel that. A lot of times, I think, you know, we kind of have the opposite approach, where you look at your weaknesses and think about, oh, we've got to make these weaknesses better. But there is definitely something to be said for leveraging their strengths and running with that. And I'm looking at the website here now as I'm talking to you. And so you're right, there are the four fields that you go across, identity, purpose, direction, and application. But there are some fun family names in here. And I'll be honest, when I I first looked at this, I kind of looked at the names and I kind of had maybe a little preconceived notion about <laughs> what might happen. And I'll tell you, it was not what I thought, but when I read the assessment, it was spot on. And so some of the other names that you have are trailblazing families or the impactful family or the harmonious family. Well, my, my husband's family is Italian. So harmonious, like no, we're, we're going to eat, but it's going to be passionate too, which I love. So Derek, I would love to ask you what what is your family type? And then I'll share mine. Sure. We are the harmonious family. Oh, um, you're not. So are we, you really? Yeah, that is, real. that is just, that's amazing. I love it. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> uh, uh, so we, so Gina and, and Gina gets most of the credit. She is an incredible wife and mom to our two kids. And um, we have, we do have a secret and that is we have the world's best family. So everybody <laughs> else out there is competing for second place. Just, just, you know, I love um, it. But we are a close knit family. And, and I think it goes back to core values because yeah. when Gina and I went through family ID 12, 14 years ago, um, one of our core values is that we are radically protective of our quality time. We are radically protective of quality time, which means we often have to say no to things outside the family so that we can say yes to quality time and relationship as a family. And that ties into harmonious family a lot because the harmonious family is strongest in family identity. That's its strongest principle out of those four. That's the first in the sequence is an I. And, um, and so those deep relationships and being protective of that quality time really makes a difference. That is so important to protect that quality time. And I think that, again, just looking at all of the pressures that we have from the world and we think about, well, if we don't do this, then, you know, maybe their college application is going to be derailed or, you know, the honest truth is this is going to step on some toes, Derek, but I'll just say it is that I really see, and I'm talking as a mom and as a pediatric care provider, just a relentless pursuit of youth sports. I mean, we're seeing the select sports just explode 
load. And again, those are not bad. Do not hear me hating on select sports. I'm not doing that, but it can very easily take over your life. And Derek, I'll share with you, you know, that we were very protective of our family time as well. And my son, he played select sports for a little while, but we put a hard and fast boundary and said, we would not be playing any sports on Sunday during church. We were not going to miss church to go to sports events. And if that meant that, you know, we had to step back or something like that, or miss out on something or miss an opportunity, then so be it. But I've talked to so many parents, especially with sports and, you know, their kids are in college and never played. You know, when you look at the, the statistics of kids that go on to play sports, it's like less than 1% professionally. And they don't ever say, you know, I really wish that we'd spent more time with that. They always say, I wish that we'd spent more time as a family. And so that's something, you know, and now I can share that, you know, I have got young adults and teenagers and it was one night this past summer, I looked at my husband and it was not lost on me. Here we were a Friday night. It was like nine o'clock. We were at my in-laws house. We were all playing pickleball. All my kids were there. They had the opportunity to go out and do other things, but they wanted to be together. And so I think investing in that is so, so, so important. Absolutely. Uh, What we believe is that teenagers, they don't rebel against authority. They rebel against lack of relationship. Absolutely. So if, if they rebelled against authority, they would rebel against all authority. But every teenager has a favorite teacher, coach, mentor, somebody who's pouring into their lives. And it's that relationship that allows them to listen and to pour into that. And, and, And to your point, Jessica, I agree with you. Um, I could tell you an experience from this weekend where we as a family of four consciously made the decision to um, protect our quality time in the midst of a baseball tournament. And so it was, hey, we're going to, you know, you take this one and I'll take this one and we'll go different. Oh, no, time out, time out. If we are radically protective of our quality time, then we need to make a strong decision here. No, we are all going together. We'll hire a babysitter for the dog to stay at the house all day long (laughs) and take care of the pets so that we can all be together and have quality time together on the trip to the baseball, support the brother, and then jump in the car and be together the rest of the way home. And I think what, what so many parents, and you touched on it earlier as well, so many of us want to do what's best or what's right, and we don't know exactly how. And, and, being a better parent or a better spouse is not a target that you can hit on the wall. You can't throw a dart and hit better. But if you have clear boundaries or clear identifiers on who your family is created to be, well, now you have a target. Now everything leads towards that clear, clear vision of, well, are we being radically protective of our quality time? That's a yes or no. Are we being prayerful in our decision-making? That's a yes or a no. And so it's having clarity on the vision that your family is to become that helps you move and make decisions. It becomes a framework through which you make decisions headed towards a goal. And it's no different than what we do at the office, what we do with vacations, what we do with um, other projects of here's the clear vision and the goal. Now let's reverse engineer and filter all of these decisions towards that common goal. You know, I've heard you say this several times now, this phrase, Derek, we are radically protective of our quality time. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I bet that your kids know that phrase and they accept that phrase. And when that is your value, when you say that about the baseball game and just a great example of how you're living that out in your life, you didn't have protests and no, really, do we have to go all day? Why? It's just, that's your family value. And it makes it so much easier to get buy-in, I think. And, you know, we had that too, where it, when we were having baseball and when we went, one of the boys was playing, the other boy was helping my husband coach in the dugout and was being, you know, the assistant and helping in whatever way they could. The girls were running the concession stand and I was running game changer or keeping score on a pad out there. And it, all of a sudden it's one boy's game became a family event where we could all contribute. And there's lots of different ways that 
we have adopted that as a family, but it is a great way to integrate, still do some of the things that you want to do, but be together in that. And so am I right? Am I calling that out right? That your kids are all in on that? They are all in. They can list our five family core values. And better than that, they hold Gina and I accountable to those five family core values because we gave them that authority. We said collectively as a family, this is what each of us is called to. So you have the right to call me out if I am, if I am having, um, if I'm not being prayerful in decision making, or if you see one of our other core values is unwavering integrity. Hey, if you see that I'm not having unwavering integrity, please call me out because that's a standard and that's a goal that we that we all live to. I think that's really courageous to invite your kids to call you out. And this is something we do in my house, too. And I get a lot of pushback from other parents saying, well, it's disrespectful. Well, of course, you have to have boundaries around that. It needs to be respectful in the way that they communicate with you. But I have found that my kids are such good mirrors of where I am. And when they're given that freedom to call me out, they see me more than anybody else sees me. They know every emotion I have. They know every motivation I have. They know every discrepancy I have from what I'm saying publicly or what I'm saying privately. And having that accountability has been absolutely wonderful. And, you know, when they say it respectfully, exactly like you said, calling out on our family values, especially for us, uh, that's on tech boundaries. We really hold those dear and, you know, they'll, they'll call us out and we'll say, yes, that is there. And so I think there's definitely room for that. It gives the, it empowers them to have some agency in this situation, which I think is essential for buy-in. That is where they don't feel like it's a rule that's being imposed on them, they feel like it's a value that they are engaging in. And I I just, I can't say enough about that. I I think that's a really great thing. So you've said your family values are being radically, radically protective of your quality time, prayerful and decision-making, unwavering integrity. See, I'm taking notes here, Derek, what are the other two? (laughs) Enduring family unity and pursuing excellence in everything. Well, I think that there are families who are thinking, I want to have this. Well, if you go to family-id.com, that's family-id.com, you can take a free assessment. There is a big blue button on this on the upper right-hand corner that says, take the assessment and you can find out what kind of family type you have through those, uh, those core four of identity, purpose, direction, and application. And I took the assessment. I told you I would tell you what kind of family I have. Well, look, we're up against a break, but I haven't forgotten. I will tell you what it is when we come back. And it was a great experience for our family to walk through this process and to see that we all came up with the same thing. I was encouraged by that. So don't go away. We'll be right back with more from Derek England and Family ID. Podcasts of the Dr. Nurse Mama Show are available on the podcast page at AFR.net. Now, back to Dr. Jessica Peck on American Family Radio. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to my conversation with Derek England from Family ID. Do you want to have a family that has a core identity and a shared mission and purpose? Well, this episode is for you, and I'm telling you, it is a great way to strengthen your marriage, to strengthen your relationship with your kids, to strengthen your kids' relationship with each other, because I hear a lot about uh, parents who are saying, oh, my kids are 
fighting with each other. Well, if you want more family unity, this is the way to go. We've been talking about Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. And today is all about creating a vision for your family. So Derek, we talked about your family being the harmonious family, which is just so ironic that I happened to point that out and say, (laughs) I knew that that would not be us, but our family is the focused family. So what can you tell us about the focused family? Yeah, we're focused that, and it was clear across the board. That's great. So the focused family is great. They prioritize purpose and family purpose answers the question, why am I here? Like, why am I in the family? And why are we here? Or what is our collective purpose as a family? And so purpose is uh, the highest focal point out of the four uh, identity, purpose, direction, and application. And I see that. Uh, I can tell that because of that high purpose score in your family, that's why you often feel called to go make a difference in community, society, or God's kingdom. And so you're drawn, hey, this is why I'm here. And it follows with purpose, then identity, then direction, then application. So why am I here? Who who am I? Where are we going? And then how do we get there? Kind of the general way in which you filter decisions on what you're going to do. That is true. And it's funny because when I was looking at the list of families, I would not have picked the focus family just necessarily right out. But as I was reading the description, I thought, yes, this describes us to a T. And so when I was reading the just brief overview, it says a clear sense of purpose guides our collective actions, creating a cohesive and determined unit, which is definitely us. And then this is the sentence that I really loved. It said, your family's focus is not only about productivity, It's about creating intentional and meaningful connections with one another. And I can tell you that we have been very intentional about creating connections. A lot of that we do through tradition because we have a lot of family traditions that we hold very dear, but you know, I grew up in a family that had a lot of uh, generational trauma and we had a lot of relationship dysfunction and it was one that looked good on the outside, but that behind the scenes, we did not have those intentional and meaningful connections. And so that was something that was just really important to me and my husband to have when we had a family. And it also said in the description, Derek, that focused family navigates challenges with resilience, ensuring that every effort contributes to the overall success and well-being of each member. And I couldn't describe our family better because we have experienced an extraordinary number of challenges just throughout my kids growing up, just health challenges, financial challenges, family challenges, job challenges. I mean, you name it, but we have focused on resilience and our family's mission is really to share that hope with others to say, because there's a lot of families I think out there who feel really discouraged because as a mom, when I was first starting out, Derek, I thought, how do I be a good mom when I don't have a relationship with my own, when I don't have that pattern to follow, but I know that for such a time as this and that God can give us new mercies every morning. And he has done that faithfully with me. So I would love to hear your, your encouragement for families out there who are thinking, Oh, my family is pretty messed up. Like we've got some issues. We've got some problems. I don't even know where to start. What would you say to that family? Well, I would say first pray because prayer is the greatest answer and the greatest response in in any situation and to seek God. Um, And so every family is redeemable. And I know that there are challenges and broken relationships in families today but it's, it's one of the things that we talk to about families that have adopted children, or, or we have a heart to create um, a very specific curriculum for families that are split because of incarceration. Um, there's brokenness. But God's heart is for families to be united, to be connected, and to be working together in the same direction at the same pace. And if you can get some of that, Um, Some of that working together, if you can get a family identity and something that connects you stronger than just living in the same house, 
then you can move in that same direction. And it's that source of identity that can get through the hardest times. Uh, families that, that foster children and even adopt children in their home, they face some of those difficult challenges that you were talking about. And it is the understanding and the foundational view of, wait, this is who God created me to be, and this is what he called me to do, comma, therefore, I will persevere through this. Therefore, I will humble myself. Therefore, I will lay myself down. Therefore, I will endure through this to be together and to accomplish the vision that he's called us. Same thing with our heart of incarcerated families. If there is a parent incarcerated and a child outside, when they reunite, we want something that ties them together more than just parent-child relationship. We want a common identity and understanding who God created them to be and bonding them together towards a common purpose. Uh, I used this example um, in a Sunday school group previously, and I didn't mean to call them oxen, but I <laughs> inadvertently called everybody in the, in the classroom ox. Um, but if you hook a plow to one ox, um, he can pull 5,000 pounds. If you hook another one and you yoke them together, it doesn't go to 10,000 pounds. Their towing capacity goes to 15,000 pounds. Wow. Because working together in the same direction at the same pace can really, really, it, it improves the synergy and make an incredible difference and impact. Well, this is just the kind of encouragement that I'm getting. And even like I said, just from me taking the assessment and looking through the resources that were provided by Family ID, I see exactly things like that. You talk about ox and or ox, but I, our family mascot for the Focus family is the wolf. Let me tell you how much this just thrilled my husband to death because the thought of being a wolf and having a wolf pack, like he really, he ran with that. He thought that was so much fun. But you also give things in this family assessment like, resonating truth. So the resonating truth for the focused family comes from Matthew six thirty three. but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And, you know, Derek, I got goosebumps, honestly, reading this because I thought, yeah, that's what our family is focused on. We're not focused on material success. We are focused on following God every day and seeing what he has for us in his kingdom and he has added all these things unto us as well, which is just so exciting. And then in this assessment, you talk about the positive outcomes and the common cautions, which these were really good. So tell us about what families would get if they take the assessment and looking at contrasting these two things. Yeah, sure. So it is um, positive outcomes are those things that essentially naturally occur in your family. So for the focus family, it would be passion. You are probably a passionate family by nature. And so how do you take that passion and direct it into something that becomes a skill or a talent? Or how can you effectively harness that passion to make a difference and you turn it into mastery? Another one is um, persistence. Persistence comes naturally in a focused family. You, you mentioned it. Hey, we're going to persevere. We're going to push through the challenges and what's on the other side of persistence is triumph. And so those are great opportunities as a family to come together and focus and say, okay, this is a naturally occurring aspect or emotion in our family, and this is what we can see as a fruit of it on the other side. The flip side, the common cautions, are threats inside a family. Hey, we might have Hold on. I think that we've lost Derek and just wait one second. And let's see, Derek, I think we lost you for just a second. Okay. I'm here. Okay. I'm okay. Here. It was just, we heard common, uh, ca common cautions and you said, and you were just about to give some examples of those. Okay. Common caution. So a common caution in uh, a common caution is a threat for a family. Again, naturally occurring emotions or tendencies inside the family. And if they get distorted, what they can turn into. And so I gave the example of uh, a focused family, a common caution is commitment. You are naturally committed to right and wrong. But if it gets distorted, it can turn into legalism within the family. And then it's 
structure on the other side. And so the assessment helps families look in the mirror and see what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, what are our natural opportunities and our natural threats, and how do we navigate those to, to watch out and caution those and really encourage and develop these other ones. Well, and one of the encouraging things I saw on our family profile, and let me just tell you, Derek, I feel seen, I feel called out, I feel like, <laughs> you know, this was just, I thought, how did you just nail this with just me taking an assessment online? But one of the uh, one of the positive outcomes that's listed in the Focus family is intentionality leads to legacy. And that is my dream. That is my calling. That is my passion. I already told you my husband's family is Italian. We have no problem problem with passion in our family, but we do want to leave a legacy that will inspire other people and say, Hey, you can come from hard places. You can come from difficulty. You can come from brokenness. And you said this earlier, Derek, and it's my favorite phrase in the history of ever, but God, but God's heart is to restore and to renew and to redeem and to make all of the, the crooked places straight and all of the broken places healed. I mean, that is God's heart. And one of the other things that's great in this, Derek, is that you give some suggestions for impactful action. And I'm already planning some of these things you talked about. Uh, it for, Again, I'm talking about for the Focus family. I'd love to hear some other uh, variations of this, but a trivia night cooking together with a purpose as nature scavenger hunt. I mean, these are things that even though my kids are older, we could totally have some fun with, like we could buy in and do some silly games, but be intentional together. So what are some other examples of impactful actions? Um, one, let's see the trailblazing family, for example, um, they're, they're high on direction and then identity. And so some of the things that would work for a trailblazing family are um, understanding new stuff. So language learning, debate night, uh, let's learn a new skill, a new art. Let's have a cooking class together because they, that family focuses more on or their natural tendency is how do I get there? They're all about action. How do I just do the stuff and I'll figure out what and why later, right? Um, there's other times about uh, scavenger hunts, photography scavenger hunts, writing a family mission statement. There are plenty of ideas within those different family types that would resonate. Our, whole, our heart or our goal is that it would resonate with in the right way based on who they are. So tell us one more time, Derek, if people want to engage with Family ID, tell us again about what kind of services you talked about, some coaching and things like that. What would, what do you provide? Sure. On family-id.com, there is the Family ID assessment, and that is probably the, the easiest way to get engaged. If that resonates or sits with a family and they want to take another action, we have a full Family ID, what we call the master class. And it's completely free. It's video-based teaching that can walk a family through family identity, purpose, direction, and application. It's, I think, 10 or 11 videos, and they're each about two to three minutes long. And that includes a downloadable PDF or a printable PDF to work on those things. And we give, you don't have to come up with core values out of your brain. We give a full list of core values, and you're just identifying which ones um, really resonate with your family and, and sit strong there. Um, and so we can walk a whole family or a small group, um, a family group at church through that process, and it's completely free. And then we do have, we still have seminars and live events that are an extended and deep dive into this, where we will spend a couple hours walking families through and helping them understand and walk away with mission, vision, and core values. I would love to see nothing less than you just have a flood of families who come and sign up for that masterclass because Derek, you said it earlier, most parents and especially parents who are listening here to this program, they want to do the right thing. They want to raise kids who love God and serve others. They want to have a strong family identification and a strong family values. They want to be intentional, but sometimes it's just hard to get started and to have those 
those resources and that coaching and encouragement along the way. And hopefully if that's you, you'll go to family-id.com and start with taking the assessment. It's really easy. It gives you a link. You can send it to your other, to your kids or your other family members and have them take it and compare results. That's what we did in my family. And that's how we came out to be the focus family, but we will see you next here next time where we prescribe hope for healthy families. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio.